Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about vices, woodworking vices. This is the vice that I've had up here for the last couple of years on this makeshift bench I have here. And I'll be honest, for what it is, it has worked very well, but I've outgrown it. It's a hobbyist vice. If you're doing very small things on a small table, you need a small vice for hobby type stuff, building small boxes, this vice is actually fine. Um, this is the same casting that the Irwin uh, vice is that you can get at the big box stores now. This one was more expensive. I got this at Tools for Working Wood. Um, the, the, the screw, all of the hardware for this one is nicer than the Irwin one. They don't sell it anymore, so I can't tell you where to find this one. But the Irwin one I have downstairs, it works fine. If you just want to do hobby stuff, it's fine. I've outgrown it. I found this. <clears throat> This is by Doyle. Doyle is a brand that Harbor Freight sells. They call it at Harbor Freight the uh, Doyle Carpenter's Vice. It's selling for $70. Now, if you've seen my Harbor Freight videos, you know that Harbor Freight has a lot of coupons. I was able to get this for 20% off, uh, which would be about $14 off. So, what, $56 I think I paid for it? It was right at $60 with taxes. Not a bad deal. This is much, much more substantial than this. I mean, I can't even pick this up with one hand. This thing is much heavier than this thing. So, um, at 70 bucks at MSRP pricing, if you can find a coupon, let's get this vice installed and let's see how it compares to the old one. All right, guys, let's install it. Now, I've got the bench top flipped over here. I know you can see some dog holes here, but those are old from when uh, I was using the other side of this. So this would be the bottom. And the vise is going to kind of go right here just like this. Okay, there's the four bolts. Uh, the vise is now securely uh, to the bottom. I'm going to flip it over and attach the face part. And uh, I do want to tell you, you're probably going to say, boy, that's some pretty stout looking hardware. It is pretty stout looking hardware. The problem is I had to go to the hardware store and get it because this did not come with any mounting hardware. Now the box that this came in was pretty banged up. I'm going to guess the hardware fell out. I'm assuming it comes with something. Um, but that is just a mystery of uh, me not wanting to go back to Harbor Freight for about $1.80 worth of hardware. Um, you know, that's, that's a uh, bad news situation for Harbor Freight that it didn't come with the hardware. Uh, I am assuming some kind of hardware came with this. I doubt it's as stout as this. I did go get some uh, two and a quarter inch uh, uh, pretty thick bolts. These are thicker than qu uh, quarter inch bolts. They're... Uh, uh, what would be next? Three sixteenths, I guess. Um, they're they're a good size lag bolt that I got here. I got four of them and four washers. Uh, not the end of the world. I would have probably spent more gas going to Harbor Freight than the dollar eighty I spent on this hardware. All right, so let me flip this over. Don't want to hurt my woodpecker stuff down here. I don't know if you can see this. I am working on a woodpecker's video, which is why all of my woodpecker's tools are down here. A little sneak preview for you that'll be coming soon <clears throat> so there you can see the quick release mechanism so my initial plan was to route out the gap for the cast iron and very quickly realized my bit was dead and decided to move on to another option. 
And that option uh, was to start by gluing up two pieces of uh, cherry that I just had laying around as scrap. Uh, these are going to form the base that goes to the bench. And I then would take a few scraps of oak flooring that I had to put between the bench and this cherry to make the cavity. So instead of routing it out, I added a cavity to the uh, uh, lumber that's going to be the uh, face part of the <coughs> mice. Okay, so after I got this completely glued up here, I'm going to show you a picture here uh, after I take it out of the clamps showing the oak making the cavity. And I'll show you how this cavity works in a second. All right, everybody, I am trying to give you a view of this vise on the bench here. There's not a lot of room, so I'm actually using the GoPro, so I don't know what kind of footage I'm getting here. Hopefully it's okay. Here you can see I've installed that piece of cherry with the oak. Here's the strip of oak that just kind of goes around. And what it does is the other piece of cast that's up against here is buried in that cavity. Now, as you can see, I got my hand plane here. I've been tringing this down. I got about another... Uh, quarter inch to go. Once I get that flat, I will make the uh, chop for the other side. I have this nice piece of hard maple here, which I will cut to size, put here, and that'll be the other end of the vise. So we'll get that done next. I'll uh, do a little planing, and then we'll cut this piece of maple, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, after a considerable workout with my number six, my new Tate Tools number six, as you can see, I'm almost flat. There's still a little gap there. Um, I didn't want to bring it completely down because we're going to have to plane this board down as well to, to sure it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a mark there and there. And I'm going to go downstairs, plane this, cut it to size, bring it back up and put it on a vise. Alright, as we can see, I've got the piece of maple in here. I took it downstairs, cut it to size hard maple and my blade, it burned a little bit and it also burned here on this edge. So what I want to do is we're going to block plane over it just to clean the burn mark up. Okay, that is some hard, hard wood. We don't have too much to plane off on this one. Which is good. We got to put two screws in here to get it in place. We want to pile I may get a comment down below about how I fastened this on, so I just want to cover it right now. I did not plane an angle to the face of this piece of maple. Uh, it looks like it's landing level with the cherry. Uh, some vices will have the top hit before the bottom, and you have to put an angle into the face of your vise. If you don't, the screws holding the, uh, the, the piece in mine is maple will come loose. I'm going to watch it. If it does start to loosen up those screws, I will plane an angle to the face of the maple so that it doesn't uh, come loose. Uh, time will tell. I'll do a separate video if that's needed. All right, I spun the bench around and uh, am planning from the other uh, direction here, just the way the grain was running. Uh, I needed to go on this side for the maple. Uh, I'm going to be honest, you can see how this rocks. This is not a woodworking workbench at all. This is a bunch of 2 by 4s glued together with a vise bolted to it, and it's actually sitting on top of a Craig uh, workmate type of uh, thing, the Craig uh, workstation. Uh, I'll be building a new bench this winter, and uh, this vise will be transferred to it. Right now, this is what I got. It works. I make use of it, but it's not the best at all. Uh, but it does let me evaluate this vise. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what do I think about this vise? Well, it is much, much stouter than this. And, you know, for a hobbyist, this little guy and, and the Irwin, uh, which is comparable to it, that you can get at Home Depot for, you know, 25 bucks. They're very cheap. They work. If you're just a hobbyist, you're going to put this on something very small, which, you know, this bench is very small. Uh, but, you know, I'm planning to build a bench this winter, so we'll have a better bench. But, I outgrew this. This is much stouter. This, the first thing I love is the fact that I have the quick release. That is awesome. The second thing I love is it has 
a dog. So I'll be putting some dog holes in here. Um, as you can see, it has a dog. It doesn't clear by much. I'm going to have to work on that. The, uh, the biggest benefit to this, quite frankly, is it's holding power. This particular vise, if I was trying to resaw a board, let's say I had, oh, let's find a board. Let's say I had this board in here in the old vise. And I wanted to resaw this way. It would slide. As I was cutting, whatever I was planning to do, if I was doing a resaw like this, it would move. This, literally, I'm moving the bench. This doesn't move. I don't have any leather on here yet. I'm planning to get some leather. I'm looking to find that stuff that's cork and rubber. I think they call it crubber. I'm looking to get some of that to put it on here, but basically, I'm very happy with the way this vice works. It's much more substantial than a hobbyist vise like this. Is it as strong as, say, a big 10-inch woodworking vise? Um, it might be. What it doesn't have is as much depth this way, and it definitely doesn't have as much opening power this way, which I'm okay with. This is a smaller bench. I work on smaller tool, smaller projects up here. So this amount of strength I need, and this, amount of opening, which, let's measure it, with my new woodpecker here, I have, doo -doo -doo -doo, I have five and a half inches of opening. I probably would have preferred to have six, and honestly, I went a little thick here by building that little cavity. I could have done six. If I want, if I really want to get six, I can redo this and get the six, but five and a half is fine for what I'm doing right now. The combination of the five and a half opening, these two boards here are a foot wide. They're 12 inches. So I have five and a half inches by 12 inches. Like I said, if I made this chop the size of this shop, I could have six, six and a quarter inches. So there's room for a little growth here if I need it. Um, a few things on how I mounted it. Um, this method of making this little cavity with a piece of oak, that was just quick and dirty. Um, I'm going to build a bench here this winter up for up here. It's going to be 20, uh, excuse me, 48 inches long by 18 to 24. I haven't decided yet. Deep. It's going to be about this size, but I'm going to have more depth here. And it's going to be substantial. I'm going to build it out of some form of a combination of, I have enough southern yellow pine downstairs to make the base. And I think I'm going to get hard maple for the top. When I build that bench, I will properly embed the vise into the top. So there isn't no cavity needed there. The vise will be flush to the bench. I did it this way because I knew this was temporary. Um, I needed something to continue working up here with. I'm very happy with this. I can tell you right now that this amount of holding power is so much more than what I had. Literally, I was getting frustrated up here using the old vise and having things slip around when I was trying to uh, uh, use the vise. Doesn't happen at all up here anymore. Add, that, add to that this quick release. It's a huge upgrade from the old vise. Do I recommend this? Yes, yes I do because the price is very good. You know, the price at $69.99 is, that's MSRP. Like I said before, you can get coupons and get this thing in the 55 dollar range, which for $55, I think it's a great vice. You could spend more and get a larger vice. This this bench does not need a larger vice. This is the appropriate vice for this bench. If you got an 8, 12 foot bench, you might want to get a big 10 inch vice and put it on there. They're a couple hundred bucks. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong. What I have here is exactly what I need. So this is absolutely the right vice for this bench. I hope that made sense. I hope what I did here uh, worked for you. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.